Got another exam question here on the transition elements topic, so we're up to number 13 now. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video, so just click on that, have a go at the questions, and then play on when you're ready for the answers. Okay, so we'll make a start, so just be careful on this one. It wants complex ions as a potential mistake could be made here. So if you add aqueous ammonia to a solution of copper to sulfate, you would initially get a precipitate of copper 2 hydroxide, but that's not a complex ion. So if you kept adding the aqueous ammonia, you would get this complex ion form. So that's what they're after, and that's a deep blue colour. You don't have to say deep, but uh, it, it is deep blue. And then if you add the hydrochloric acid, you would get this complex ion, and in its pure form, that's yellow, but it can often look green because the um, aqueous copper 2 ions, remember they're blue, so obviously if you've got blue and yellow in the same test tube, you could look green. So part B now, you can see I've highlighted the O minuses. So why is this a bidentate ligand? The O minus ions can donate a pair of electrons each to the central transition metal ion. So obviously it's got two ways to do that, hence it's bidentate. So in words, they'll be after something like this. So it donates two pairs of electrons to a metal ion. This is really important to say as well forming two coordinate bonds with the metal ion. Moving on to these 3D diagrams now of the other two stereoisomers of A. So I've already populated the first one, so I've gone for the easy one first. So you can see in the one they've given us, complex A, the water ligands, you could compare these ligands if you wanted to, but the water ligands, they're at 90 degrees apart from each other. So this is actually a cis isomer, I'll come onto that for the next one. But you can see in this one, I've put the water ligands directly opposite each other. So they're at 180 degrees apart. I could have drawn them that way or that way, but I just think that's the easiest way to visualize them. Just be careful as well how you connect the waters. So it's got to be via the O. Anyway, so what kind of stereoisomer is this? This is the trans stereoisomer. It's not optical. It's not a mirror image of that. So this is just the trans isomer. So moving on to the other one. So I've, I've just copied the um, octahedral structure up here so you can see them side by side. So this is still cis, so those water ligands are still 90 degrees apart, but this is just the mirror image of that. And this mirror image is not superimposable on that one. So if you try to put that on top of that, two of the bonds would actually be running in the opposite directions. So this is a non-superimposable mirror image of complex A, and so therefore, as well as being a cis isomer, it's also optical. And finally, the empirical formula, including the charge of complex ion A, so you can have the atoms in any order, just so long as the right numbers after them. The charge, I'll just quickly explain that, so we're told that it's copper 2 plus, each of these bidentate ligands have a 2 minus charge. Remember, water doesn't have a charge. So the overall charge is going to be 2 minus.